Hi. So today I wanted to address something that's been showing up in my common stream a lot lately, and I want to try to turn it around into something positive. So one of the things that you may find with most people that do these types of guides or educational videos online is that they're often showing you the best possible scenario of when everything went right. So they'll do 10 or 20 or 30 takes of something, and that's not something that I've ever really believed in doing. But there are times where I don't even turn on the camera because I just, or I just don't upload something because it's just, it, I know it probably won't make a good video. And something I've been noticing more and more in the last few weeks, I'm not sure if it's uh, something people are noticing more or it's something that's being, uh, that, that I'm doing more, is a lot of the comments on the hand steadiness, so my hand shaking, I get this like, oh, are you on cocaine, early onset Parkinson's, LOL kind of stuff. And I got, a, I, know, I got a lot of it also for that Michael Carvin interview because people said, you know, oh, it's not just that you, are, you don't like sitting still for an hour when in reality, I really just don't like sitting still for an hour. But a lot of people were saying things like, you know, all that, like, just some of it well, I know is probably genuine concern. Some of it is just silly trolling. And rather than take that the wrong way, this may surprise you, but there are things I don't feel like sharing with the internet. But rather than take it the wrong way, I wanted to use it to address another set of comments in my stream, which is that I probably can't do this, or I wish I had steady hands to do this, that, or the other. I don't have steady hands, so that's why I can't place the component. So rather than take it as a negative, I want to try to turn this around and turn it into something positive and encouraging, which is that, yes, I don't have steady hands. No, I don't feel like publishing why that is on the internet. And, but what I do want to do is show you that, yes, you can do this stuff even if you are a bit shaky or you're not really good at making uh, precise hand movements or leg movements or whatever, anything like that. So today is usually one of the days where I wouldn't want to film anything because I'm not feeling particularly great in that area, but I thought it would actually be helpful if I did film something today, even though I don't feel great in that regard, because you might actually uh, become encouraged by it. So if you're somebody who's having issues with soldering, because your hands don't stay very steady and you can't place things properly, I figured I would show you me doing a, what's supposed to be a very, very simple job if you have steady hands and something that a lot of people think requires steady hands. I just figured I would show it to you on today. So we're going to start with this LCD connector over here. Okay, so this is what the board looks like over here, and I might as well get my regular camera in view so that you can see the entire thing since this is supposed to be... An educational and encouraging experience. I'm going to kick on the air filter. There is a little bit of solder that has to get wicked on the side over here. You can see that this is also broken, so this is going to require a wire to get run to it. See this? The trace between here where backlight is and over here doesn't look very good. A little wicking on... And we grab a connector. Uh, now, first thing that I like to do here is add a lot of flux. I think this is the first time I actually said a lot instead of a little because I feel like I make the mistake in so many of these. I can't work with this guy. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do here is, I guess, lower the exposure since you can barely see shit there. The first thing that I'm going to do is solder one of these little anchors on, but that's not good enough. As you can see, that's clearly not aligned. All I did is I just did it there so that I'd have solder on the pad so that I can then do this and move it around a little. I don't want to move it around too much, because if I move it around too much, then it'll be out of place. So that's exactly where I want it to be. And I have a little solder on the top, but I'll live with that. It's not going to hurt anybody. Now we go over to the other side, and we're going to do the same thing. And the important thing here is to have flux that's already there because I'm burning the flux away on the tip of the iron right now. And you just tap this down. And the most important thing is that it be flat on the board. The, thing that, the issue that I notice a lot of people have is that they're not flat on the board as they work, and then it makes this entire process a complete friggin' nightmare. So. Now that we're done with those pins, we're going to do these ones over here. Yeah. 
Okay, now we get this one over here. Don't add too much solder. You don't want it going inside the connector. It's easier to get it inside the connector than you think. All right, so now we're going to go over the regular legs of the chip. Not the chip, of the, of the connect. Okay, so now we go over each individual pad and each individual pin. And you may think, your hands are not steady, it's impossible to do this. Yeah. Yeah. My sympathy for you is so high right now. Now, see what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn the iron. I'm not going to use this, because what I see a lot of people do is something like this. Whoops. 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 Oh, my hand's not steady. That's why I can't do it. And they make a big clusterfuck of everything. It's technique, baby. Technique. So see this? See how the iron over here that I'm using, that you can barely probably even fucking see right now, has a tip? That's the tip, but that's not what I'm interested in using. I'm interested in using the elbow. See the elbow, which is kind of closer to like here? The elbow is going to touch both the pin and the pad, and it's going to let me do something like this. Ready? 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 Oh, look at that. Look at that. Fucking factory. Bam. See that? Because there's no way in hell I'm doing this pin by pin. So you do this. You do this. Now, that blob, I'm going to drag the blob out to the two pins that are supposed to be shorted together to begin with. And I'm going to run a wire. So we're going to do this. To scrape off the insulation on the wire. Yeah, now they have to wait. Huh? She, they're calling the compl I, I know. No, trust me, I, I'm already with you on the same page. I, I know... It the small piece of the conversation you overheard sounded really mean, but there's a company that, that we uh, set something up for. And we set up everything and we pretty much said, okay, here's the account, here's your username, here's your password. And uh, you need, if you may, you know, if you want to make changes to it, you have to make them here. So for example, let's say that you get rid of your old credit card that you're using for billing. You now have to uh, change it in here. Not only did they never set up their own account, not only did they change their card, not only did they never contact us when they changed all of it so that we could help them with it, but then they actively sought out to bitch and blame us for the entire thing. Like, it's my fault that, it's totally my fault that you, that you didn't tell me that you changed your credit card and billing information. I don't get it. I don't get it. And that's the thing, like, these people are so fucking nice. They're so nice. When you, when you point it out. But before you point it out, they are like, it's your fault, how dare you? I can't believe this, you guys are blah, blah, blah. And it's like, seriously, man? Seriously? <laughs> ah, anyway, that's the connector. It's one of those things like, okay, make a mistake. Forget to pay your bill. Don't give me the information so that I can help you if you don't know how to use your account. Never contact me. Change your car. Do all of that. That's all that's fine. I'm okay with that. I will more than happily sit down and help you out without charging you a dime for a place that I have no uh, support contract with. Just because we set up your system, I will help you out and not charge you a dime. But for fuck's sake, don't call in with that attitude like I did something. Because I've, I've done that before. I've done some stupid shit. I remember uh, I actually wound up getting the Con Edison turned off here once and I, like i didn't call up con addison going mother like no i know i didn't pay my i forgot to pay my bill <laughs> you know <laughs> like you gotta know when you did something really stupid anyway oh that is one sexy looking connector 
I love I love this one because it looks like a middle finger right there. See that? That is my middle finger. Anyway, we're gonna plug in a screen and see if we get a light. But man, it, it, it's so great. It's so great to be on the same page because I didn't answer the phone. The other person answered the phone. I knew from hearing three letters, uh, three words, exactly what it was gonna be, and I just look at him and say, uh, "Balance low," and he knew exactly what to say. There was no back and forth or anything. It's because, you know, people, that, that's one thing about tech. People are going to try to catch you off guard with this type of stuff. Like, everything becomes your fault. It's all, all on you. And then you get, and then you, you get humbled. Nah. So now I'm getting a call because they, uh, they want, you know, why isn't it back on yet? And it's like, you know. I know, you know when you, you don't pay your cable bill and you, then you pay your cable bill but you still got to wait 45 minutes for your cable to turn back on? Yep, that's that type of thing. All right, so let's see what I get. I get a light. I think I bridged pins four and three though because I saw the I saw the screen the ink activate before it should have. Let me just take a look and make sure I didn't bridge pins. Those pins. Let's see. Did I? Did I? Did I? No, I didn't. That's just that. That's me being a lunatic. All right. So yeah, that's that. It worked. And again, as always, you're not. That, that, I, I want you to really get this with this channel. You're not always going to be perfect. You're not always going to get everything 100% right. And if you wait until you can get things 100% right, you're never going to get anything done. And I, I, I'm not saying that you should start working on customer devices before you know what you're doing. I'm not saying that you should work on things that belong to other people when you don't know how to use any of the equipment. That's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is uh, I'm trying to give you an encouraging message. I'm not encouraging you to go nuts the first time you use this without any knowledge of how it works. But I don't want you to be discouraged from trying at all just because you may not be as perfect as a video you see on the internet. You know, it just, it's just all about practice. And with time, you'll find ways of overcoming your deficiencies. So, for example, I know that I am very, very good at tracing down faults. I'm, I'm good at learning how, you know, what the sequence of something is and tracing down faults. I'm really good at that. But I know that I suck when it comes to, like, you know, like all those little precise hand movements. I had, like I had my earwax removed this morning and this, the, the proficiency with which this person was like uh, using a little stick to go into my ear and pull out little pieces without piercing my eardrum. I, mean, I, I probably would, if, if I had the job of doing that, I probably would take out somebody's brain. Like that, that's an amazing level of proficiency. And I know I'm not going to have that proficiency. So how can I get around it so that I can still get my job done even if I don't have that level of proficiency? And what I do is this little tactic with the iron where... Ah, annoying. Anyway, so what I do is this little tactic with the iron where I'm using the elbow rather than the tip. So even if somebody is 10 times more proficient than I am with hand movements, they may not be able to get the job done because they're using a silly technique. And as time goes on, you are going to come up with techniques that allow you to get around whatever deficiencies you have as you go over the course of, of doing your job. So here, hopefully, I managed to take a negative and, and turn it into a positive, and hopefully you learned something, and hopefully this has encouraged you a little.